Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I briefly wanted to explain some of the basics of DaVinci Resolve 17 so that you're a bit more familiar with the terminology inside of the program. So this video is especially aimed at beginners that might be using DaVinci Resolve 17 or video editing in general for the first time. So when you launch the program, you're going to see this project manager window. So a project is this container which you open up individually and they can contain references to the different clips, images, audio assets, and more that are stored on your computer or related hard drives where you're bringing all of that into a project in order to compose your videos. So when you create a project for the first time, you would go down here, hit new project. So in this video, we're going to be talking about projects, timelines, and exported or rendered videos. So let's go ahead and create that project there. And then we'll boot up into DaVinci Resolve's actual editing interface. So when we come into the program, whether we're on the cut page editing workflow or on the edit page, we're going to see an area for our video timeline down here below. For the cut page, you can also see an extra timeline right here in the middle. So this is going to show everything inside of that timeline all at once completely zoomed out so that you can click between all of the different parts so as for the cut page you actually are going to see multiple timelines so right here in the middle we have a timeline that's represented as the entire duration of the timeline all at once whereas this timeline at the bottom is going to be much more zoomed in and you can control the zoom whereas this timeline at the bottom is going to be much more zoomed in and typically where you'd make your actual edits so they can see precisely where you're making the changes. So on the edit page, we just have this one timeline at the bottom here. Now, currently, we don't actually have a timeline file in our project. And as such, nothing is actually showing up down here. So we bring video clips into our project. And then when we drop a video clip onto the timeline, that is when we would actually start editing. So you can think of a timeline as one sequence of video that's going to be composed of one or multiple source file clips, the original raw footage that you recorded and that you want to actually bring into your video project. So we just need some clips over here in the media pool in order to make that happen. So on this computer, I have a few directories full of random stock clips. So I can bring a few of those into the media pool over here. So let's go ahead and select a couple here. I'm just going to drag these and drop them into the media pool. Now we get this little thing that pops up that says change project frame rate. So a timeline is going to have a frame rate. Your source videos are going to have their own frame rate and they might not always match up. So when you import videos into your project, you can decide if you want to update the timeline frame rate to those source files when you bring it in. In this case, I'm actually not going to change it. I'm just going to leave it as the default settings. Now, at this point, we actually still don't have a timeline file sitting within our project. In order to make that get created, we need to add a video clip down here and create that timeline. Another alternative is that we can go up to the top up here and we can choose new timeline. So this creates the file and then this section actually lets you view the timeline. So this button, so, so this option creating the new timeline creates the file. And then down here in these timeline sections, you'd actually be able to view the contents. So let's go ahead and create a new timeline, file new timeline. And we have the ability to set a name here. So note that you can actually have multiple timelines inside of your project. So that's one big difference between your project and your timeline. When you open up a project, you're opening up one thing, but inside of that thing can be composed multiple timelines. And when you actually export a video, you're exporting from one timeline. So a project can have multiple timelines, which means you can have multiple videos that you actually want to export. And in fact, you can actually export the same timeline into multiple videos as well by breaking it into chunks that you export individually. So let's just go ahead and I'll just leave the name as timeline one. That's totally fine. So we get these video tracks and audio tracks down here inside of your timeline. You can have multiple video tracks and multiple audio tracks. If you want to add more at any time, you can just right click and do add track. And then, well, in that case, because I clicked in the 
video section, it gave us a video track. But if we click down here, right click and uh, add track, we can add a stereo audio track, which means that there's going to be both a left and right audio channel. So when we actually want content inside of our project, we can drag a source clip onto this timeline. So now that we have this referenced inside of this timeline, if we save the project, reopen it, or we switch to a different timeline and come back, we should see the files here in exactly the way we had it in our latest edits. So as I mentioned, you can have multiple timelines inside of one project. And one way you can switch between them actually is to click here to the timeline view options and you click this section up here, stacked timelines. So when you do that, you can see each of your timelines listed over here as different tabs that you can go between. So if you wanna change what one of these tabs is viewing, you can click here and select your timeline and you can add a new tab over here. Um, now you actually have to have a new timeline in order to select it. So let's go up to file and then new timeline once again. I'll just create the timeline and you can see it automatically selected timeline two here. Each timeline can only be represented once inside of these tabs. But in a project that has multiple timelines, this is just a really convenient way to go between them. As an alternative, you can look in the media pool. You're going to see your timelines referenced here. So anytime you want to edit one of the timelines, you can just double click it like so. And note that our video clips that are inside of that timeline are still there. They're still referenced. Uh, remember, though, that this is just a reference to the video file and the time inside of that video file. So if you delete that video from your computer, you're going to get a uh, sign the next time you come in that's going to say basically your media can't be found. And then you need to locate it once again in order to continue editing your video project normally. So if you were to delete your video clips from your computer, where they were originally stored and brought into this project, then what you're likely going to see is you'll instead of seeing the actual video clip here, you'll see a media can't be found message, and then you'll need to relocate those files and bring them back in. So for any video files that go missing, you can right click up here where it's referenced, even if it's not currently located, and you can come down here to change the source folder, relink selected clips or replace the selected clip with another one as well. So hopefully that gives you a decent idea of the differences between your project, your timelines and the video clips that you have referenced within those timelines. Let's go ahead and drag a couple more stock clips into this project. Okay, so now that we have two timelines, we can go ahead and show uh, the exporting process a little bit and how while you can export an entire timeline as one video file to be the final export of your project, uh, you can also select different areas of your timeline to be a shorter video rather than the entire timeline as well. So let's go to the deliver tab over here. And on the deliver tab, you'll see in the bottom middle, there's this box here that says render entire timeline. So that's the default. And if you Choose one of the render presets up here, like YouTube 1080p, and then you give it a file name, a location on your computer, and you hit export, then what you see in the timeline when you were editing should be exactly what you get at the end of your export. So let's go ahead and export this as a file. So I'll just call this export one entire timeline, and I'll make the location my desktop. So let's go ahead and export that. So when you add your video to the render queue, it's not actually exported yet, but inside of this render queue, you have the jobs, which are the instructions you just gave it on what you want to pull out of your timeline to export to a final video. You can either hit render all down here, or you can select individually the jobs in your list. So you can queue up multiple jobs and you can have them render at once if you want to export multiple videos in one go, which in this case, we're going to do. So let's actually go back over to the edit page here. And I'm going to switch to timeline two now. So in timeline two, I go over to the deliver tab again. And now we have a different timeline in order to export. So this time, let's use render and out range. You can click on this render box and you can see there's different options here. Entire timeline is just going to automatically select everything. And render in out range is going to be a specified 
uh, area of your timeline, but not necessarily the entire thing. Now, we don't actually need to manually switch to in out range. If I go to the start here and I hit I, we set our endpoint or the starting area that we want to render from. Then we can kind of snap to this in between of the two clips. I'm going to hit O on the keyboard. So that sets our out point. You can see now that everything else is grayed out. And since we're rendering the in out range, that means we're only rendering what's between this start and this end, basically the original stock clip. So let's call this export to uh, half timeline. And I'm going to add it to the render queue. And now in exactly the same way, I'm going to snap to the area between these two clips, hit I to set an end point, go to the end here and hit O to set an out point. And now let's do export three, half timeline, part two, and I'm going to hit add to render queue. So now we have three jobs or three videos ready to export to our computer, pulling from two timelines inside of one project. And we're using three source clips in order to make up the actual material inside of those timelines. So let's render all of these uh, videos and then we can just take a look at the final result. OK, so now we should have all three of the videos exported to our desktop. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. So the first video was the entire timeline. So we'll double click on it here and we should see the entire duration of our first stock clip. We only had one clip on the timeline. So that is exactly what we get here. Now, the second export, if you recall, we actually had two timelines here. So if we go to the edit mode and position the timeline right about here between the two clips and I hit play, then you'll see that there's a very obvious cut halfway in this timeline. But if we go to the desktop and I double click here on our first export and we look for that moment in time where we have the cut between the two clips, then you can see it just kind of ends at the first clip there. So now if we go and take a look at the second video, the export of half the timeline, we're not really going to see the second video clip in there. Now, in reality, at the very end here, there's a single frame of the second video clip, and we might not have wanted that and would need to kind of troubleshoot it further, or maybe just one single frame kind of snuck in there. What we could do when we're exporting is just to move it right here and then move one frame to the left with the left arrow key and hit O to set that as the out point so that we don't get that extra one frame there at the end. But we're definitely not seeing the rest of this video pop in with that clip because that has been our part two of that timeline. So if we open it up right here, we're not going to see any of the first clip, but we're going to see the entire duration of the second timeline. So we can see that when we are exporting videos from our project, generally speaking, we would export an entire timeline. But you can also break one timeline into multiple jobs using in out points, I and O on the keyboard with these in out ranges. And you can have multiple timelines within your project. So you might export an entire timeline twice, but you have two timelines. So that would produce two videos from the same project. So a project just kind of contains everything. You can put an unlimited number of timelines, video clips, audio clips, images inside of all of that. So hopefully at this point, I've explained the difference for you uh, between your project, the timelines inside of those projects, the source clips that you bring into your project, and then the final exported or rendered videos that is the results of all your efforts inside of the project, but not necessarily exactly what you see in a single timeline. And then of course, exported or rendered videos, the final product from your project. But as we showed, you can actually create multiple videos from the same project. So all of these terms relate to each other, but hopefully you can see from the video the differences between all of them. So I've been Chris, thank you for watching, and hopefully I'll see all of you in my future video content.